Hey everybody, it's Romania Black. Oh buddy, we are on episode 19 of My Hero Academia, and I'm not gonna lie, I woke up this morning and I'm like, it's been two weeks since I've watched an episode of My Hero Academia. I'm not ready for the season to end. We still have seven episodes, so I'm glad it's back. <laughs> and I'm especially glad because I don't think this is spoiling anything from the manga, but the rest of this season is probably going to cover things that I've been looking forward to quite a lot in this series. Uh, starting with this episode because as you've probably seen from my soapbox where I talk about seasons one through four Aizawa is one of my favorite characters. I love him. He's so chill But there's so much under the surface with his character and I hopefully after this episode I'll be able to talk more about it, but I love Aizawa uh, One of the ships I'm all for in this series is present Mike and Aizawa So the fact that in the preview we saw both of them has me pretty excited. So <laughs> it's been a while. I'm so excited to get back into My Hero Academia. I am ready. So I like got up, went and jogged, got a shower, was like, all right, let's do this. <laughs> so I'm ready for episode 19. I can't believe we, we have seven episodes left, which seems like a lot still, but we are getting into the home stretch, right? We're in the last third of the series for this season. So Lots of stuff can happen. So as always, I'll be reacting to the episode and then I'll be doing a non-spoiler discussion and a spoiler discussion after that. And I have a feeling, I have a feeling we're gonna have a lot to talk about <laughs> with this episode, perhaps, but we shall see. So in any case, I'm ready to start this off and see what happens. I hope y'all are too, but let's do this, shall we? We are gonna start episode 19 of My Hero Academia, more of a hero than anyone. We're gonna start that here in three, two, one, and let's go. Oh, buddy. <laughs> this episode, I, I've been waiting for this storyline in the manga to get an, animated, and it didn't disappoint. They really nailed Aizawa's emotions in this episode because Aizawa comes across as being this very chill, calm, emotionless character who's always cool under pressure. Like that's that's always his game. And even President Mike, President Mike, you know, is loud and abrasive, but he's always like chill, right? He's always like in a good mood. So seeing these two characters that are known for being calm under pressure completely lose their composure, that's when you know that something big's going down. They're like, okay, what would make these two guys lose it and it's the fact that their best friend growing up at ua has been turned into a nomu so it's establishing a lot of things in this chapter establishing that nomus were once human beings that have been augmented and like frankenstein and put together and i love one of my favorite parts about the episode is when um gran torino when they're like as i was like why would anyone do this why would one for all why would all for one do this and it cuts to all for one being like, I just like stomping grapes and making the wine and tasting all the quirks and putting the quirks together in combinations that taste the best. Like just, ugh! it's just so like, oh, it's so gr grisly and gross and perfectly all for one. And it's just, it's so subtle the way he says it. And Gran Torino's like, these guys just had to basically talk to their dead friend and interrogate him. I'm not gonna bring that up. I'm gonna be tasteful about it because Gran Torino is tasteful. But man, the, the expressions in this episode, the, the moment where Aizawa like runs his hand down his face and he's like, that's perfectly adapted from the manga. And just the emotions and expressions were so perfectly adapted um, from the manga chapters. They were so good. But, but yeah, the idea that Kurogiri has been a Nomu this entire time, which raises some interesting questions because Kurogiri is a very articulate, um, very articulate, fluid, um, intelligent Nomu. Like he can, he makes decisions. He has, ra he has a rationale. He has a personality. He has a goal. He has the brain power. So the Nomu that Endeavor fought should have been a foreshadowing to us as the audience that Nomu's like this existed. But Kurogiri is clearly on the upper level, the upper echelon of this, because he can make rational thoughts and decision making without being told to do so. Like he, he has intelligence. So that's a big step. Like Kurogiri is clearly on the upper end of the Nomu being created here. And the idea that his whole mission is to protect Shigaraki. 
And that's how Aizawa recognizes him because he remembered his friend was always one that would protect something and had a fierce sense of protection and loyalty. And when he sees that in Kirigiri, he's like, oh my God, yeah, this is that's something Shirakumo would absolutely do. So as far as the rest of the episode is concerned, it's this very dramatic crazy moment with Kurogiri and it's sandwiched with this like moment with UA and getting uh to see the locker room banter but of course Achako has the little charm that she got from Deku or we think it's from Deku it's from Deku uh from the Christmas party and Mina Mina our resident Ochako Deku shipper is like instantly on it like oh my god <laughs> like what is this and she's like mm. and I like that it's adapted well from the manga that Ochako's like look like I'm just keeping this charm I'm just keeping it close to me right now because Ur Uraka realizes she's like, look, I know we're in the middle of school. We've got hero missions and duties to do. She's like, she's like, love can wait. The romance stuff can wait. That That's not the priority right now. It's like girl has her priorities. And then we cut to the other side of the locker room with Deku and all the guys are asking about his new power. So it's funny that we get that focus between the two of them. And of course, giving the ladies some fan service of getting shirtless Bakugo, just being like, meh. I feel like this show really sexualizes Mina. They always have shots of Mina, like her butt and everything. And then Bakugo, the, and Bakugo and Kirishima are like the manly equivalents of that. And it's like, okay, here's a shirtless Bakugo for you and, and Kirishima getting suited up. Sure thing. But really, really, I mean, good stuff there. But the whole episode, it was mainly Aizawa and Present Mike. And just the voice acting, the expressions. Oh my gosh. Like seeing, seeing them drive there and Aizawa being like, can you not go any slower? And present Mike being like, just calm down. And he's like, so tense. And the moment where present Mike has his hand on Aizawa's shoulders and it's shaking, he's so tense and so nervous. And here's the thing, uh, in the manga, this isn't a spoiler, but in the manga, when, when All Might, I'm rewatching the episode, when All Might is trying to get their attention, he goes, symbol of sweets, <laughs> like instead of symbol of peace. And in here, he's trying to make the cotton candy joke. And they're all like, just like in the manga, they're all like, All Might, what are you doing? You're being lame. And he's trying just to distract them from the fact that Aizawa is gone, because I'm sure All Might knows where they've gone. They've gone to Tartarus. And he's just trying to distract them and, and like make the kids feel okay. But it's like you have UA with all the kid high school shenanigans and then you cut to the adult world where shit's going down and things are dark as hell. The moment where Aizawa asks the, the detective, he's like, have you told the family? And they're like, if you guys don't help us and we don't get anything, yeah, we're gonna have to bring the family in. And that's what gets Aizawa totally on board finally is he's like, I don't wanna see, I don't want his family to see their son like years later, because this has been years. Like Aizawa and Present Mike are in their late 20s. So this has been like 15 years or so. So they're like, why would you want to bring the family in after all these years to see their son like in this state to be augmented and know that he's been just cobbled together with other quirks and other souls? It's just, uh. and the fact that the worst part about all of this is even when they break through to Shirakumo, even when they break through Kirigiri and get to the heart of the matter that it is their friend that's at the base of the Snowmu, the fact of the matter still remains, Shirakumo's dead. Like, he's not coming back. He He's dead and he's a puppet now and he's being the base of this Snowmu. But no matter how far they reach to him, they can't bring him back the same way he was. Like, and yeah, that, oh, that tension. The The animation this episode was so good at getting those expressions and that emotion down. The only thing I regret is, I'll talk about in the spoiler corner, but there's so much to the story. And I'll talk about in the spoiler corner that we don't get in this episode. And granted, it follows the manga perfectly. That's not a spoiler. I'll talk about it again in a minute, but it's not a spoiler. that This follows the manga perfectly. Um, but there's so much more to it, and I'm going to talk about it later, but... Um, all I'm going to say without getting into spoilers is if you get a chance, go read Vigilantes. It's the spinoff series to My Hero Academia. Um, I won't spoil y'all in the non-spoiler discussion. I'll talk about it here in a minute, but just go to Vigilantes and start at chapter 59. There's a, there's a side story about Aizawa and Shirakumo and present Mike back in their high school days. Um, it's a little side story. It's like a volume and a half's worth. Um, it's fantastic. It's, I like it, I, that side story with Aizawa, um, it's chapter 59, starts at Rain and Cloud, and it's, it's so damn good. 
it's so damn good. I hope they make an OVA out of it. If they make an OVA at the end of the season of just, I hope this episode's really popular and people start asking for more content because if they made an OVA of that vigilante side story, I would be elated. I would just, in a heartbeat, it's so damn good that I just need it. But seeing young, young present Mike and young Aizawa here with Shirokumo is so good and them walking along. And knowing that present Mike's voice actor is also the voice actor for Wise for Wisemi from Haikyuu, I could kind of hear a little bit of it this this episode. I don't know who Shirokumo's voice actor is, but it's a great voice for him. And, and it's so good because you contrast it to Kirigiri who has such a deep, uh, like a deep voice and you contrast it, it's so, so good. But this episode just highlighting how evil and malicious uh, All For One is. Like he really truly does not care about anybody. Like he he wants to experiment. He wants to like do the Frankenstein experiments with these people. And then we cut to the very end with the doctor in one of the hospitals uh, having the doctor in one of the hospitals doing the experiments on Shigaraki and it's like, is he making Shigaraki into a Nomu? I don't know! I don't know! But I'm really excited that we get My Villain Academia next episode. I'm so excited! My Villain Academia. I've been waiting for this. I've been waiting for it all season. Y'all don't even know. Well, well, if you listen to the spoiler discussions, you know. So I'll talk more about it there. But yeah, getting into My Villain Academia. Oh, it's going to be a good time. I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. But, so all the, the pieces are getting, as Hawk said, the pieces are in place. The pieces are in place. We have our word, hospital, and it's such a simple word. Just hospital. Um, and that's enough for them to narrow things down and start investigating. So the pieces are coming in place, as Hawks noted. And I like, I like the dynamic between Hawks and Twice, where Twice is so innocent and asking questions of Hawks. And Hawks is like, yeah, sure, buddy, what do you want? And if you notice... If you notice in this episode, he asks twice what he wants. And twice is like, oh, black coffee, but with lots of milk and sugar. Earlier, when uh, Slide and Go, when the one guy was talking to Hawks, Hawks had his coffee. And he's like, oh, we have drinks for you. He's like, nah, I like my coffee with lots of milk and sugar. That twice and Hawks like the same thing. They like their coffee the same way. I like it. I like it a lot. But, uh, oh my God, just this episode was really well done. It's so good. But like I said, you need to go read Vigilantes. Start at chapter... You don't have to read all of Vigilantes. If you don't know, Vigilantes is just a spinoff series. It takes place, I think... It takes place like maybe eight years in the past. It, it's quite a few years before the events of this story. It's like maybe eight years in the past. Um, but starting in chapter 59, there's a backstory with Aizawa and Shirakumo and Present Mike and, um, and other characters too. So I won't spoil it for you, but if you get a chance... Uh, Viz's website has it. Um, you can go on there and read it or read it online. But chapter 59 is where it starts and it's so good. If you liked this episode, you should read that side story because it it just amps up the emotions that much more. And I think this, I think that this story, this part of the manga came out at the same time as Vigilantes. So if you were reading along, uh, the Vigilantes story came out first. And so I was reading Vigilantes the same time I'm reading My Hero Academia. And so I knew about the Shirokumo story. And then when it came out in the manga, I was like, and the manga people were like, who's this guy? And I'm like, oh, go read Vigilantes because you don't even know. And so it's, it's layers. There's layers to the story, but it's so, so good. So I highly recommend go read it. It's worth it. Um, it's worth a half a day just to, it won't even take you half a day to get through. It'll take you like an hour to get through those chapters. So worth it. It's just the emotion is, mm -hmm. and then coming back and rewatching this. Hmm. But yeah, I've got spoilers to talk about, so uh, I want to get to those. But yeah, I, I hope you all enjoyed this reaction in this episode. It was so good, but I'll be honest, we got six episodes left, and I'm so ready. So uh, My Hero Academia is back after its little hiatus. I'm ready for it. I'm excited. But I've got spoilers, spoilers to talk about, so I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care, and I'll talk to you all again real soon. Bye. <sighs> this episode, this episode, I've been waiting for the storyline to be animated and the animation did not let me down. God, those expressions to Aizawa, just the animation was so smooth and so emotional. But here's the thing. I, I need the OVA with vigilantes because I feel like even the anime only people, I feel like when this, when these chapters came out in the manga and they have been adapted beat 
for beat. I tried to find panels that weren't in the anime that were in the manga. No, this is chapters 253, 254, and 255 to a T. Those three chapters, it's a perfect adaptation of them. And I remember when the manga came out and people were like, oh my God, oh, I saw in present Mike. And those of us that had read Vigilantes, we were like, oh, sure, I came out. Because you really need to read the Vigilante story to get the most impact out of this. And that's why I kind of wish that they had adapted the Vigilante story. And I hope they do an OVA. I really hope they do an OVA. Um, or if they ever do a Vigilantes animated series. They're only like on chapter 106 of Vigilantes. So it's not quite enough to... I mean, they could make a full season if they wanted to. But not enough to make like two seasons of Vigilantes. But I really hope that they would at least do this side story. Even if they leave out the main character Vigilantes, the protagonist. He like meets Aizawa. And that's what causes him to have this flashback but even if they left him out and just did an OVA of the flashback with them it's so good and I wanted to show you guys some panels of it but they do show some panel the panels they show of Shirokumo's death are from My Hero Academia they're not from Vigilantes but there are some moments I felt like could be expanded on so like for example this panel showing Aizawa's reaction to Shirokumo's death basically Shirokumo Aizawa and Present Mike, they were all three best friends. It was kind of like Deku, Bakugo, and Shoto. And Shirokumo, they established in Vigilantes in the chapters that Present Mike was like the go-getter, the jack-of-all-trades, like he was really sociable, easy to talk to, like a natural-born hero. And Shirokumo, same way. He didn't have the best grades. He was kind of aloof, but he was loyal and the best friend and also a natural born hero. And Aizawa of the group is the one, Aizawa is like Deku. Aizawa is the one that has to struggle and make the good, he has good grades, but he has to struggle because his, his quirk isn't exactly like something that's ideal for a typical hero. He has to like train with the bandage and he has to train like his body physically to adapt and overcome situations that Shirokumo and present Mike are able, able to easily overcome. And Shirokumo's quirk is that he can create clouds. Um, he constantly, his whole design looks like Goku from Dragon Ball Z, which is funny. He has like a big coat, but he has the cloud like Nimbus. And so he floats around on his cloud and he can create clouds around him. That's like his quirk. And there's a moment uh, early on when they first meet him as a character, when they first meet him as a character, uh, he like shows up to class and it's been raining outside and he takes off all his clothes and the teacher's like, you can't be naked. And he pops the cloud around him. And I've got an image of it. He pops the cloud around him and he's like, no, 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 look guys, I can easily censor myself. And then he pulls out the kitten that Aizawa had tried to save earlier on in the chapter. And so um, it's implied. Also, I just want y'all to see Aizawa bottle feeding a kitten. This is the type of stuff you'll see in those vigilantes chapters. You need to read it. <laughs> but it, it's implied there's like a, um, there's a really interesting dynamic and friendship between Present Mike, between Aizawa, between Shirokumo, and also between Midnight. Midnight's the fourth person, and she's a third year when they're a second year, so she's a year older than them in the manga. Um, but I also wanted to make note, and this will be important for later on, but this is Midnight's high school outfit. She calls it the birthday suit edition. <laughs> And it shows in the manga that like a year later they they had a skin, a uh, provocative skin law passed where she couldn't walk around basically nude with just a trench coat and a utility belt on because it's midnight, of course. Um, but if you'll notice, her outfit is kind of similar to Momo's. And that's going to come up later in the manga that, that there's similarities, similarities between midnight and Momo. But here's the thing, the relationship between uh, those four characters, like present Mike and Aizawa are like besties. And I definitely ship those two together, especially in the present timeline. Um, Shirakumo, I feel like in the Vigilantes thing, Shirakumo had a crush on Midnight. Like he, in all the scenes, you can kind of see at the bottom of this panel, in the scenes, he's always like, oh, we'll work with you, Midnight. We'll be part of your agency. Can you join our agency? And President Mike's like, I thought it was just going to be the three of us. But I, I have a feeling based on Vigilantes that Shirakumo had a crush on Midnight. But also that Aizawa had a crush on Shirakumo. Like it's pretty obvious Shir that Aizawa viewed Shirakumo as maybe more than friends. Like that's the subtext that you get. Um, and then he dies. And the panel of Aizawa like realizing that he's gone and present Mike next to him is so, 
it's so powerful and the whole storyline is really really good and yeah he basically got crushed under a bunch of debris during their work study and he died and that's the last they supposedly saw of him and it's heartbreaking because it's like a part of their world was ripped out from them and they weren't ever the same after that and I love in the episode where they both tell Kurigiri Shirakumo they're like we became teachers like because they talk about in the flashback about them all starting their own agency and being heroes and then it kind of goes into them becoming teachers in the flashback but them saying we became teachers you know we decided to teach students and help the future generation and, and make an impact like we always wanted to and just the idea of when a part of your friend circle leaves and is no longer there like just how effective that is on your on your entire psyche and your entire life and it's handled really well in the anime in this episode but the the fact the anime just shows Aizawa constantly like clutching his face his eyes are always present because he's always using his quirk but like like covering his face his mouth and present Mike can't control himself he's just like so angry that he's just shouting he's like why and it's so well done it's mm. I really want them to do an OVA I've said that like 20 times this reaction but I really want them to do one because I, I feel like if you're an anime or manga only reader of My Hero Academia you get the gist of this episode and how impactful it is but if you see those vigilantes chapter it just adds another layer of pain onto it just ugh. But yeah, um, and then of course, we're cutting Shigaraki getting experimented on and basically being turned into an Omu too. I think I get it now. I think I get why they did. It hit me in the preview when they showed us the, the preview of the Nomus. I get now why they've set this up the way that they have. Um, I get it. I get it now um, why they've done the timeline this way because they kind of did this whole Kirigiri storyline it's a very brief blip in the manga before we get into the war arc, but they did this to one preface, to one bring back the concept of the Nomu and be like, oh hey, remember Nomus? We've kind of ignored that for the last 15 episodes. <laughs> so here's the Nomus again, and then building up the Nomus can have a consciousness, they can have an intellect, they can have a base personality, and then ending this episode showing Shigaraki being experimented on and basically being turned into a Nomu himself it's like okay we're bringing this concept back around because he's going to get implemented the quirks from all for one as well and then we're going to cut back to two months prior and show how we got back to this point so narratively it makes sense i know people on twitter that i've talked to and looked at uh, their tweets are a little bit nervous that we only have six episodes to cover a lot of ground we got like 30 chapters to cover in six episodes which can be done they've done five to six chapters an episode Especially when you get to the action, but I'm like, are they? I feel like they're gonna leave little things out, and so I'm going to bring those back up when we go back. I feel like they're gonna leave little things about Redestro out, perhaps, um, maybe not. But I feel like maybe they won't do a lot of re. They didn't do a lot of recap this episode at all, which was great. Um, so I'm hoping that we get that back in this episode. But Aizawa saying that this isn't a movie, like being so breaking the fourth wall and being so meta, and. Gran Torino being like, if there's a basis, miracles can become possibilities. Like, as long as there's, like, a grounding in reality. Um, but, yeah. I I really want next episode, and maybe it won't be next episode, but there's a scene after this where President Mike and Aizawa are, like, reflecting on this meeting on their couch. And Aizawa's like, what do we do now? And President Mike's like, I, President Mike basically says, he's like, I'd want to take everybody responsible for responsible for this and take them out and it's like just building up to so many things god and Kiragiri, the caretaker of shigaraki like that was his one that's his one goal that's the one uh goal he's been given is to protect shigaraki and he's not there right now so you know who's protecting shigaraki you know but god this episode was so good really really good I, there's so much that I'm curious with my villain academia. And of course we get that little moment with Hawks and Twice at the end. I'm not ready for that. That's not gonna happen this season at this point. It's gonna happen next season. But the whole, the idea of building, I mentioned that before the spoiler discussion, the idea of um, both Twice and Hawks liking the same type of coffee because they're very similar characters. 
Um, I'm excited for Sad Man's Parade, which I have a feeling is going to happen this this arc, um, hopefully. But I'm not ready for Twice's death. I'm not. <laughs> because Twice was one of my favorite characters in this series. And his death, like, it's not one of those, like, oh, maybe he'll come back. No, he did. And, and the fact that it's Hawks. And we're building up this slowly, like, subtle relationship between these two characters. And you know Hawks is going to betray him. And reading the manga, I was like, oh, Hawks is going to betray twice. He's going to get him turned in. But the agency is like, no, he's a big threat. You need to take him out. And in My Villain Academia, I hope we see the threat that Twice can become. And that's going to prove just how dangerous he is and why Hawks takes him out. I think it's important to note, too, looking back at this episode, that Kuragiri, he's been so augmented to the point where Erasure is not turning him back to Shirakumo. It's just in that one brief moment of relapse, but that his shape is what he, he constantly is. It's not his quirk, it's just, it's literally him. So, ugh. Just the expressions with present Mike and Aizawa, the animation team, y'all did really good. And just even present Mike in the scene where he gets flustered, he's just shaking and he just can't control like how upset he is. And Aizawa looks cool under pressure. But when he, when he ripped off the goggles, I was like, oh my God, like this is just beat for beat from the manga. It was, a, I talked at the beginning of this reaction that I'm all about a pure manga adaptation. And this was it. This was just a fantastic adaptation of the manga. And just the, the the emotions, the him grabbing his face and like running his hand down it, the callback. And the only thing I'm upset with and disappointed with is that I, I have a feeling that those that have not read the Vigilantes chapters won't get how crucial Shirakumo is to both present Mike and Aizawa's characters. Like you get the impression of it here, but again, I'm basically just advocating Vigilantes chapters 59 through 70 at this point. Go read it. <laughs> you should. You should go read it right now and then rewatch this episode and cry. Because that's, I was crying on the inside. Definitely. Shota Aizawa. And yeah, Shirakuma calling him Shota. Without even no San, no Chan, no Kun, just Shota. Like they're instantly just friends. And then him lending Aizawa the, go the goggles that Aizawa wears, he wears in, honors of in honor of Shirakumo, who always wore goggles. And there's even a part in the manga where I, where present Mike and Midnight have goggles too. It's just so good. But yeah, I, we're finally here. We're fi this, this, I've been excited for this to be animated and it didn't disappoint me. And I've been so ready all season for us to get to my villain academia. And I'm so ready for it. I'm so excited. So yeah, I, I hope you all enjoyed this reaction and discussion. I'm curious to know your thoughts down below. If you have manga spoilers, please tag them. But otherwise, yeah, next week, baby, My Villain Academia, I'm so ready. But in any case, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care, and I'll talk to you all again real soon with more My Hero Academia. Bye.